Hi, I'm Dan Cartapassi. Today I'm reviewing an HO Scale Southern Pacific GS4 Class 484 locomotive from Broadway Limited. My model is detailed and decorated as SP4449 appeared in excursion service between 1981 and 2000 in the post-war orange, red, and black daylight scheme. Broadway Limited also offers this model in other color schemes, including in-service versions of these engines in different numbers, 4449 in Freedom Train colors, and 4449 in its more modern appearance. The MSRP for this DCC and sound equipped model is $699.99. I got my model for $559.99 from Factory Direct Hobbies. At time of filming, Broadway Limited does not offer this model in their DCC Ready Stealth line, which if you're not familiar is a DC powered model that could be easily converted to DCC by adding a decoder. We'll start the engine at 100 possible points. The model is packed in a very plain looking but sturdy cardboard box. Opening the box reveals an owner's manual. The book is generic for Broadway Paragon 4 locomotives, but has a lot of information about operating the sounds in the engine. There is also a quick reference sheet which shows which keys in your DCC controller activate which functions. Soft foam surrounds a plastic cradle that holds the model. There is a warning label stating that track power should be off when placing the locomotive on the rails. The fit of the outer plastic sleeve is pretty tight. It was harder than I expected to remove. In the top of the cradle, there are several bags of items. These include traction tires, a wrench, couplers, and a small funnel for smoke fluid. The sides of the cradle are separate pieces. The model is secured by a series of pins in the bottom of the cradle. The electrical plug between the engine and tender is engaged, so I need to mind the wires as I remove the engine. It's easier to see the pins on the black plastic piece with the model removed. These engage small holes in the bottom of the engine and tender. There are also grooves for the wheel flanges. The black plastic piece is removable, so if you wanted, you could use it as a display stand. A small piece of protective tape covers the hatch on the top of the cab. I'll remove it very carefully. This is a very nice box that should do a good job protecting the model for storage and transport. Southern Pacific 4449 is a GS4 class 484 locomotive built in 1941. Some people count SP's semi-streamlined GS class engines among the most beautiful locomotives ever built, and as an SP fan I can certainly agree with that. The locomotive has 80 inch driving wheels and a trailing truck booster. This oil burning steam locomotive can produce 5500 horsepower and is capable of speeds over 100 miles per hour. The locomotive was retired and placed in Oaks Park in Portland, Oregon in 1958 and remained there until 1974. It was restored as one of the locomotives to pull the American Freedom Train as part of the country's bicentennial celebration and has pulled other excursions since. When not pulling excursions, 4449 resides at the Oregon Rail Heritage Center in Portland along with Spokane, Portland and Seattle 484700 and Oregon Railway and Navigation 462 number 197. 4449 has worn a variety of paint schemes over the years, but the most iconic is the red, orange, and black daylight scheme. The model has the post-war version of the scheme with the larger Southern Pacific lettering on the tender. Earlier versions had Southern Pacific lines spelled out in smaller letters. SP's GS series engines were famously used on trains 98 and 99, the coast daylight, but could be found operating on other parts of the SP as well. Many spent their last years hauling freight or pulling commute trains on the San Francisco Peninsula, often with the side skirting removed and painted overall black. GS stood for General Service or Golden State, depending on the source of the information. SP's non-streamlined GS1484s were built by Baldwin in 1930. Subsequent GS locomotives were built by Lima. The GS2 and GS3 classes were semi-streamlined, but built with a single nose headlight. The GS4 was the first class with dual headlights in front. They also had enclosed cabs. These were numbered 4430 to 4457. 4458 and 4459 had roller bearings and were class GS5, but otherwise looked similar to the GS4s. 4449 is the only preserved example of the GS1 through 5 classes of locomotives. During World War II, SP ordered 14 more locomotives to be classed as GS6. SP got 10 of these and the other four went to Western Pacific to aid the war effort. Photos show the GS6 locomotives had skyline casings but no other streamlining, had single headlights, and were painted black. One of these, 4460, has been preserved in non-operating condition at the National Museum of Transportation in St. Louis, Missouri. 
SP also had two more classes of 484s, GS7 and GS8, but these were ex-cotton belt engines of a different design. 4449 has been photographed a lot, so there's no shortage of reference images. I compared the model to quite a few of them, and as near as I can tell, it's spot on. 4449's appearance changes subtly every so often, and there are some things that I noticed. Since this model is supposed to represent the appearance of the engine between 1981 and 2000, I focused on photos from that period. Looking at the photos I found, the white paint around the edges of the drivers and pilot wheels is accurate from about 1981 to 84. After that, most of the photos show the wheels were solid black, though still with the stars in the center of the drivers. For part of 1989, the headlights in the front were ringed with black paint. It's not the most photographed part of the engine, but from what I can tell, it looks like the small box on top of the tender was sometimes there and sometimes not during the 1981 to 2000 period. In 2000, 4449 was repainted in a special BNSF scheme and regained the white outlines around the edges of the drivers. In more recent years, the number boards have been moved toward the front of the engine near the smokestack. The placement near the middle of the boiler is correct for the 1981 to 2000 period. One thing that bothers me is that the oscillating light should have two smaller vertically stacked lenses inside the lens housing, not just one big lens as on the model. This is an oversight that's out of step with the otherwise superb detail on this locomotive. It would probably take some work to correct, so I'm taking five points. This model is, in a word, gorgeous. The paint is thin and opaque, and the color separations are crisp. Orange and red tend not to cover well, but Broadway did a good job on this engine, and the colors are very even and bright. The small writing on the builder's plate is legible with magnification. This is super nitpicky since I can't see it without a magnifying glass, but the top of the red stripe is slightly out of register with the white pinstriping. There's just a hint of black between the two. For me, anyway, this isn't noticeable when you're just looking at the engine. The model has an overall semi-matte finish that looks really good. Even though 4449 is sometimes shined up for excursions, I think models that are too shiny look toy-like, and this avoids that effect. The handrails along the Skyline casing, however, are super shiny. It's not bad, but I find it a little distracting. At some point, I might use a small brush to carefully coat the handrails with a clear matte or semi-gloss finish to tone them down a little. 4449 has clean lines, and a lot of the plumbing that you'd normally see on a steam locomotive is concealed. Broadway did a nice job with the details that are exposed. Many of the larger parts are made of die-cast metal. The detail is very nicely rendered, like the subtle rivets on the tender that aren't oversized. The tender trucks are nicely done, including the huge brake cylinders. The cab has crew figures installed. Details in the front include the characteristic SP air horn, freestanding headlight conduit, number boards on the boiler face, front number plate, uncoupling lever, hoses, and photo-etched pilot trim. This is actually a separate part, not just painted on. Like the prototype, the rear of the enclosed cab is fairly plain, but it does have a drop-down deck plate. The access door at the top of the cab in the rear opens and closes. There are some hoses and other details on the front of the tender. The back of the tender has freestanding wire grab irons, separately applied side ladders, marker lights, wire conduit, uncoupling levers, and hoses. The electrical connector appears to be a modern addition and, as far as I know, would not have been present during the steam era. On top, the model has the characteristic teardrop-shaped smokestack. The top of the Skyline casing has subtle details like this access hatch. The whistle, dynamos, and other small details are recessed into the top just like on the real locomotive. The top of the tender has freestanding wire handrails and nice hatch detail. Underneath there's a little less detail, but most of it couldn't be seen anyway when the locomotive is on the track. One thing I'm happy to see are the electrical contacts on the trailing truck. Many steam locomotives don't use these wheels for extra electrical pickup. The pilot truck, however, doesn't appear to have any contacts. The rear driver set has traction tires on both sides. Under the tender there are contacts on both trucks, however it appears that each truck only picks up power from one side. There are holes for the speakers under the tender as well. All the wheels are metal and they have the standard RP25 tread profile. The model has knuckle couplers on both ends. Looking for a match on the horizontal center line, the front coupler is at the correct height. The rear coupler is close enough to call it good. All the wheels on the engine and tender are in gauge according to the NMRA standards gauge. The locomotive doesn't wobble, but the tender does, so I'm taking 5 points. The engine and tender together weigh 37.5 ounces. I was unable to get a consistent reading with my normal pull test. I measured drawbar pull in excess of 10 ounces on my force gauge, but the drivers stopped instead of spinning and I was afraid of damaging the engine, so I stopped the test. Pull in excess of 10 ounces is outstanding and it certainly feels like a very strong engine. 
The engine and tender are connected by an electrical cable and a drawbar. There's a plug under the cab that should allow the cable from the tender to be unplugged, but it's very tight on my model, so I decided not to mess with it. The drawbar is a very simple tab and slot arrangement. The decoder has a standard mode and a pro mode, which remaps the function keys and gives a little more control over the lighting. I'm testing the model on DCC. The engine is programmed to address 3 by default. So I'm going to throw out a request to Broadway Limited and other manufacturers that put smoke units in their engines. Please, please have them default to being off so that you could only use them if you want to. Um, you know, I have asthma, I have allergies. Uh, my wife, Nicole, has some respiratory problems. And the first time I ran this engine, it started smoking and I had to figure out how to turn it off. And it took a while. And by the time I did that, she could smell it all the way across the house. And I'm filming in a room with the door closed. So, <laughs> you know, um, I remember one time I was at a train club and it was a Lionel layout and they had like five or six steam engines going with smoke. I had to leave the room because I just, um, it's an irritant to, to my lungs. I just, I, I can't take it. So, uh, you know, I'm sure I'm not the only one who has that issue. Um, no, I know not everyone does, but it would be really nice if it was something you could just turn on when you wanted to use it, but otherwise have it be off. It does work, and though I had a hard time getting it on camera, the smoke pulses in sync with the steam chaps. In standard mode, F0 turns on the headlight, which is directional. The front headlight comes on when the locomotive is set to move forward. The rear headlight comes on in reverse. F0 also toggles the class lights and other lights except the cab light. F24 turns on the oscillating light. I'm sure this could be reprogrammed, but I question the logic of putting the oscillating light on such a high-numbered key. I think we've passed the point where DCC and sound is still a novelty, and it makes more sense to me to put the things that you'd want to control most often on the lower-numbered function keys. Many of the lower numbered keys are set to various sounds by default. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but the cab light seems to stay on when the locomotive is stopped, then turn off when the locomotive starts moving. I checked the manual and this is something that can be changed. If you want to switch the model to Pro Mode, set CV128 to 1. In Pro Mode, the headlights are not directional. F0 turns on the front headlight, and F3 turns on the rear headlight. In Pro Mode, F4 turns on the front marker lights, F12 turns on the rear marker lights, and F5 turns on the number boards. F22 toggles the whistle so that the F2 key will play 4449's air horn. All of the sounds are super loud by default. Thankfully, the individual sound volumes are adjustable by programming CVs. Personally, I would keep the whistle and horn fairly loud and turn down everything else. F8 mutes the sound and the model runs quietly. The model has a capacitor circuit that will keep it running for a few seconds if it loses contact with the rails. I did notice a very slight hitch in the mechanism, but I haven't been able to determine if it's a mechanical issue or something that can be tweaked with CV programming. As I mentioned at the beginning, there's a parts bag with couplers. One is a coupler with a shorter shank and the other is a dummy coupler. These could replace the long shank coupler in the front if you wanted. The Broadway Limited draft gear boxes are of an unusual design and won't work with Katie whisker couplers, though they look like they would work with conventional Katie's. A Katie draft gear box with the lip filed off will fit in the rear. The Katie 158 whisker coupler ended up tilted down slightly, so I had to file the mounting pad a little. Since the model had a long shank coupler in front, I used a Katie 156 on that end. The fit is tight enough to tip the coupler box and make the coupler too high, so I'm filing a little material from the pilot opening. 
The tender trucks are held in with a screw and a spring. The screws are already in as far as they will go, so tightening them to reduce the wobble won't work. I decided to try using a KD washer to compress the spring a little more and hopefully hold the truck a little tighter. I ended up using two washers. The tender wobble is reduced, though not completely eliminated. It's probably enough to keep it from being noticeable when the model runs. So 4449 is a very special engine to me, as I'm sure it is to a lot of people. Um, one of my earliest memories of seeing a steam engine was 4449 in its Freedom Train colors, and my grandfather took me to see it. I think it was in San Jose, California. Um, it was just uh, parked, basically, but it was under steam, and I remember they blew the whistle, and it, it kind of scared me because I was small. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that, that was really a neat experience. And, um, I mean, seeing the engine, not so much getting startled, but um, anyway, um, it's been very special. Uh, Nicole and I took our first rail fan trip together to see 4449 back in 2017. Um, and also this engine has been kind of a hole in my collection. I've had models of Santa Fe 3751, Union Pacific 844, and 3985, and 4014. Um, I like models of locomotives that are still running or have been restored, um, but I never had a, a model of 4449 in HO scale. I have the Kato N scale one, but um, this is really neat to have one finally in HO. Let's see what we've got. The upper headlight should have two separate small lenses inside the larger lens housing, so I took five points in the prototype accuracy category. The tender wobbles, so I took five points in the standards and operation category. That leaves us with 90 out of 100 possible points, which earns an A-. This is a beautiful model, and it deserves a green signal. Overall, I think Broadway Limited did a really nice job on this engine. If you're looking for an SPGS4 in HO scale, then I think you might like it. If you like this video, then please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. <laughs>